In this video, we'll be fine tuning our camera and movement, and we'll be doing that with the aid of some placeholders, such as some level blocks and some placeholder enemies. Let's start by having a look at where the build is right now. If I hit play, okay, we've still got the free look camera, one of the prefabs Ben was playing around in, and uh, we've already concluded that our game is going to be a fixed camera, so I'm going to need to tweak that and find a good position for the camera. And rather than just going in blind and saying, okay, well, in this incredibly exciting world that we've got at the moment, what do we want our game to be like? Often that's not a good way to be making decisions about your, your movement and your camera, because when there's only three or maybe there's four blocks in there at the moment, that run speed could be good or it could be too fast, or it could be too slow, we don't know. So what we need to do is put in some placeholder and start to get a little bit more of an indication on how our game feels, and that's going to require you guys to use your imagination. This is going to be really cool. And to do some pretending, to pretend that a block is a mountain, and to pretend that a blob is an enemy. First of all, what we're going to do is anchor ourselves by getting a, a screenshot of a game that we feel is pretty good. So I really like Torchlight 2 as an example of the layout of the uh, the levels. I think the levels are really cool, the camera positioning and stuff. Uh, let's run up here. I really like that tree. I like being able to run behind the tree. Got some enemies here. That feels kind of good. There's four or five enemies. That, to me, feels like a good amount of enemies. When I play Diablo, there's there's like dozens and dozens. That's okay, but I'm, I'm thinking like the four or five at the moment, so you can think about combat a bit more. And you know what? I really like this spot just here. This feels pretty good. There's some, some bits I can run down here. There's some things that I'm going to be able to run behind. That's great. I'm not cut off when I run behind there. I like that as an example. Some things in the scene to run around, but I can still see the enemy. So you know what? What I'm going to do is take a screenshot of probably about here. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it directly into our Unity assets folder. So those of you who have been working in Unity a bit, you'll know about this, but I've saved it in my uh, repos dragon assets folder for now. I'm going to rename it as uh, screenshot of torchlight. And then jump back into Unity and wait for it. There it is down the bottom. Wonderful. So I've got my screenshot. And the best place for me to put it in a scene is my own scene so that Ben can still be working in his combat sandbox and he doesn't arrive and say, what the heck's going on? Who's gone and, you know, I spent hours making this lovely ramp and who's messed with it? So let's go and make our own scene or level, if you will. Control D to duplicate that. Go down here, rename it. Let's rename it. You know, I've got village in mind. Let's call it uh, Rick's Village. I'm calling it Rick's Village just so Ben knows where this village came from, or if our artists are working on it, they know. Uh, did I make any changes in Ben's sandbox? Didn't really, so let's not save those. And now I am in up here, you can see Rick's Village. I'll say see it up here. Great, excellent. I'm just going to take this light and pop it out of the way so it doesn't get in the way of my beautiful scene. Right, and now it's still one of Ben's awesome prefab blocks that he's created here. Pop it over the side. I hit F to focus on it. I loved when I discovered that. And you know what I'm trying to make here is a bit of a billboard. So I'm going to use a, a similar uh, dimensions to what I think I captured just then, 16 to 9. I think it probably was, although my screenshot wasn't perfect. So I've now got that in my scene. I'm going to drag my image on top of that and boom. And you know what's awesome is it's upside down, of course. So let's find a good way to rotate that. Do, 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 do. And then... Uh, there we go. I could probably just type in 180 in here to get it more precise. Now, what I'm looking at here is uh, some idea of the, the essence of it, the moment of it, the camera angle of it, so I don't have to flip backwards and forwards to another application. This is also really great when I start to get artists working in my scene. I don't have to have a long document explaining to them what's going on. I'm very much a don't document it unless you have to document it kind of guy. We'll spend a lot of time talking about our game design document, but for now, let's just shove an image in there and say that's what we're working from. Okay, so let's build. Uh, uh, just very quickly, we'll build this out. We'll steal some of Ben's blocks again. Hit R to stretch it out. I'm going to create this one over here, uh, probably a little bit like that, a little bit like that. I'm not going to make this perfect just at the moment. I'm going to give you guys a challenge to lay out your scene how you like it. 
Uh, but for now, I'm just going to do it rough and ready over there. What else do we need? We'll steal this one. Thanks, Ben, for putting these blocks in here. He's a good guy, isn't he, that Ben? Giving you some blocks. Okay, that there. Great. So that's just very basic. You know, I'm just trying to hit the geometry that we've got there so I can run through. I think these guys still need to be a little bit closer. Uh, I'm sure you guys are building this as we go. Uh, and let's have a little look see at that and see how it's starting to feel. Okay. That feels a little bit tighter. I think these guys might be a bit higher, as I'm saying. But uh, generally feels like the tightness. And now... I need to start changing up my camera. So we've still got this one in here. I'm not sure where you guys rested on that after you played around with your camera. I'm going to kill that guy there. Now let's see if we can find Ben's camera prefab. Uh, probably the one that says camera. Camera arm. Drop that into the scene right up the very top. Let's see how that one looks. Okay. Yep, that's great. Now we've got this. Yes, good. So the positioning on our world is a little bit different to what we've, what we've got on our scene here. Uh, you can see that where they've got their level, it's the blocks coming a little bit more straight from behind of the player. So we've got an option here. We can rotate the camera or we can rotate all of our blocks. So I'm going to grab all these blocks and just rotate them around a little bit like that. Grab our player. Move him back in a little bit. How's that feel, Ethan? You like that spot? Yes, I do, Rick. <laughs> what do you guys reckon? Shall I start doing Ethan voices? No, spare us from that, Rick, please. Okay, so I don't like it here. And what that means is either our levels are too high, sorry, our blocks here are too high, or our camera position's not high. And I'm thinking that our camera needs to be rotated up a bunch more. So jump into the camera, focus on that guy there, get some rotation, switch it to local, and pointing it down, 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 and then I switch it to global, yep, global, the other global, and lift it up so it's still a little bit more in the middle of the screen. There we go, let's see how that feels. Okay, it's a little bit too high, but we'll just test out the angle. Okay, that's feeling better. I think if we if we prevent the player from getting too close to that block, then that's going to feel pretty good. They're generally just too big, the blocks that I've got in this scene. Uh, make them a little bit, just shove them down like that, nice and easy. Uh, so we're making a few decisions already. How high can our foreground blocks be? How high can the blocks be that we run through? We might do a little bit of occlusion in the future of where you can still see your character as they run behind it. And that's a good thing for us to start noting down. Good thing for us to start noting down. Let me look at my list to see where we are in our progress here. We're actually in the part of adding placeholders. At the end, we're going to write down ideas and questions, and that's the sort of thing we're going to come up with. Do we need occlusion? Do we need to be able to see the player when they run behind stuff? And I needed to do one last change of the camera. Lift it up a little bit. Okay, so that's good enough for now for, for what I've got. I'm going to do a few more tweaks while you guys aren't sitting there watching me. The other thing we need to put in here is some enemies, which is very exciting. What I'm going to do, again, I'm going to cheat, because when you prototype, it's all about fast and loose. Like, there's some environment... Let's grab an enemy, and I'm going to go find, if I can find him, let's see if we can find Ethan. Uh, first person character, prefabs, no, here he is in here, third person, he's not first person, models, that looks pretty good. Let's shove an Ethan in there, and boom, there we've got an enemy. So I was talking at the start about uh, prototyping is a lot about using your imagination, and let's make this a little fat enemy, a little fat Ethan enemy. We'll rotate him towards us so he's having a look at us. There we go. And I think we need to give him a color that's not white. White seems a little bit too pure, doesn't it? So down here, right click, create material. There it is. And we'll call this uh, red enemy. Go in here. We will drop that onto Ethan, not onto our green ground plane that I know Ben took hours to create and we'll make him red how's that don't need to futz around too much with that put him on the ground okay so we've got an enemy and again this is just to get positioning it's to get speed of movement it's to get the flow it's to get a feel for how do we tune movement and camera without having a whole bunch of things to look at it's really tough so i'm going to duplicate him shove one over there 
and uh, starting to get a feel for how would I want to have my enemies bunched up? Do I feel like my game is going to be three or I feel like there's going to be uh, 30? And you know what? I'm thinking kind of having them in little small mobs like this. Let me make this guy a little bit more bossy. More of a boss, not bossy, a boss. Make him big fat guy, big fat Ethan. And for this particular guy, we're going to rename him. What should we rename him? Big Ethan. Okay. You know what? Let's stop calling him Ethan. Ethan's the, okay, he's the big baddie. Okay, just naming him up there. So I can also see he's named over there. I'm going to go through and just create an empty game object. Call it rename, call it enemies. So we can plop all these guys just in there, make it a little bit tidier. I'm also, while I'm here, I'm going to create a empty. That is environment. And you know what? This is actually just going to be for me. Ben's not necessarily going to come in here, so this is good. Uh, he'll be in his combat sandbox. Okay, so here we go. We've got this. Let's play, see how it feels. I run into this zone, this area. Maybe I've run around from behind here. First of all, I'm like, this feels too sluggish. It's good. The camera's not too bad. It's not quite centered, but we can play around with that. The angle feels a bit better. Combat, combat, combat. Those things feel like they're a good distance apart. So I'm starting to get a feel for distances. That height now is not too bad with a bit of occlusion. It might be okay. What if I run over here? Pretty good. So enemy density, location, uh, distances, feeling pretty good. Camera, not too bad. But what is really not so good is character movement. So what I like to do is play around with the movement while I'm still in play mode so I can see the changes straight away. Let's scroll down and find what might be useful here. I think the turn speed is feeling very slow. So I'm just going to add a zero on that and see what happens. Oh, no, I'm not going to make it zero. I'm going to add a zero. I'm going to add a zero on here as well. See what happens there. I'm a big fan of, of increasing things by a lot to see what happens. Okay, it's feeling a little bit crisper, but he's still moving a little bit slow for my liking. I'm going to make his legs run a bit faster. Uh, animation speed, we'll do that 1.4, see what happens. Dick, 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 dick. Okay, that's feeling a little bit better. Doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to be, it's starting to feel like my game. You know what, that feels a little bit too fast. Did you guys feel that as well? Yeah, a bit too fast. Okay. There's still a little bit of a stutter. I want him to be a little bit more responsive than that, but we don't need to take forever. It's good enough for me to be like, yep, I can tack, tack, tack. That camera angle feels pretty good. That amount of density. Okay, I think I've got it now. This is starting to feel like my game. And, and these enemies in here, they obviously don't do anything, but they allow me to visualize. I can run in an attack if swarms came in. If the camera was out even further, how would it feel? Uh, you know, if I run around the corner and attack, what if I put them hiding there? And this is a lot of the imagination side of creating your prototype. So let's have a look at where we are in our lecture. We've added our placeholders. We actually did tighten our camera movement uh, and uh, did that. And as we've gone along, I didn't talk about this too much, but as we've gone along, this is where you can be writing down questions. So for example, do we need occlusion? Uh, and having ideas such as, it'd be cool to have a whole bunch of little guys that ran in and exploded, okay? And that's where, it's so much easier to design your game when you can see it and play it and feel it than it is just on paper. So that's why we haven't spent a lot of time on our GDD, on our game design document. We're straight in there because now I'm going to say, you know what? A cool ability would be like little suicide exploding enemies. I think that'd be great. And I feel like as they come in, I'd see them. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. And I try to run backwards and shoot them and shoot them and shoot them and try to get them before they get to me. And that's where you can pretend and play around and use your imagination. Okay, and then the changes I've made just here, Ben showed you already, we'd go in here, copy, component, pause, and then paste, component values. And then I've got those elements back in there. Great, so time for us to have a challenge, and that challenge is, 
for you to create a simple scenario. I want you to add some placeholders for the world and for enemies to tweak your movement and your camera to get it to the point where you feel good about it. If you're doing some sort of rotational camera, like a free camera, then you need to have some walls in there to see how that feels. Start playing around with those situations. If your game is gonna be an interior game, like dungeon crawler, then make sure that feels good as well. I've created sort of an outdoorsy type scene here. Make sure it works for you. And then what I want you to do, once you've done that, is to share a couple, a couple means two or three, of the ideas that you came up with or the questions that you now have about your game in the discussion section. And so congratulations on completing this lecture. I look forward to seeing your ideas in the discussion section and seeing you in the next video.